<laughs> oh, look at him, he's so cute. <laughs> What's up guys, my name is Brian, I'm back with another video. I made a what's in my camera bag video back in 2000, I think 17, maybe two, three years ago. Well it's about time that I finally updated it to show you guys what I currently use for my gear as of right now. So we're just gonna jump right into it. All right, let's start with the bag itself. So I use a low pro camera backpack. Uh, I really like this one because it has a lot of space for me to put my actual gear in the lower compartment. I also like it because it has this top compartment up here. I can put a lot of accessories in it, especially if I need to travel for a weekend, I can put a change of clothes in here. It really just minimizes all of my extra carry on bags around down to this one bag. I can fit a lot in this. Also has this side laptop compartment, which I really like. Very spacious in here. I usually put my MacBook in there uh, to edit photos on the go. Uh, all around a really good bag backpack. Uh, we're going to jump into the top compartment and we'll work our way down to the bottom to the gear itself. So, open. <laughs> in the top compartment, I've got a lot of stuff in here that I usually keep. They're mainly just accessories, small stuff. So what I usually have is I have some camera uh, lens cleaners right here. It's a little blowy thing. I squeeze on it and it actually cleans the dust off the lens. So I usually keep that in here along with some actual lens cleaner. This is really handy, especially when I'm on the field. I need to clean my lenses because they get very dusty, very dirty, very quickly. Uh, so this is very useful to have. So that's why I keep it in an accessible place in the top of the camera bag. Another thing I keep in here is the CD. It actually can be used for a very cool effect. Cause if you aim it at a model um, with a light shining across it, it'll actually create a rainbow across their face. It's a cool effect that I like to use on some photos. So I keep this in here for easy access just in case you can kind of see it reflecting a little bit. It looks really cool. I also keep some extra chargers up here. Uh, this one's for iPhone. I also have ones for type C and mini USB in here as well. Always got to have pens with you. Very useful. In other small accessories, I keep a Portra 400 film roll in here. This is usually what I shoot portraits with uh, in 35 millimeter film. Gear. My gear has completely changed in the last two years. I've upgraded drones at least three times, my camera at least twice, my lenses have completely changed. So let's get right into that. Before going into the actual stuff I use for digital, for video and photo, I'm gonna show what I use for film. So I have a Pentax ME Super 35 millimeter film camera. It's equipped with a 50 millimeter 1.8 lens. And I also have a 135 millimeter F2 lens. Now these, this is a great combo, especially for starting in film. I usually don't shoot film. Um, but when I do, this gives excellent photos, especially coupled with the Portra 400 roll for portraits or a Kodak 200 gold for landscapes. Those are usually my go-to when I shoot 35 millimeter. All right, so now we're getting into the actual gear itself, what I use when I'm actually shooting a video for a company or for a project or for a client. This is what I use on the daily every single time I leave the house to go shoot. There's two main pieces of equipment that I use to shoot video and photo, and one is the DJI Mavic Pro 2. I just upgraded to this drone. The drone I had before it was the Mavic Air, and it was my favorite drone for a long time, but I decided to go up to the Mavic 2 because of this Hasselblad 1-inch sensor on the front. This drone yields the best image I've ever seen. This is like a flying DSLR. I recently went up to a place in Northern Arizona, shot some beautiful photos up there. I'll throw them up on the screen right now. And what I really like about this drone is the reliability in its signal. I flew this thing out about maybe two miles and did not have one issue with transmission back to my screen or on my controller. This drone is an absolute beast. It mobs in the sky. This thing goes about 50 miles an hour when it's in sport mode. I absolutely love this drone because it yields a very professional image while also maintaining a very reliable connection when I'm flying it. I feel safe when I'm flying this drone and that's why I love it. A new lens that I recently just upgraded to is the Canon 24 to 72 0.8 L series. Now this is the version one. It's not the newer ones that came out. It does basically the same thing. The image quality has no difference in my opinion. Uh, and I picked this up used really cheap. That's honestly the, my best advice is if you're going to get into uh, photography and you want to invest in some expensive lenses, go used because if you can find one that has 
no scratches on the glass or no dust or mold on in the, on the inside. You can pick these things up for about a grand when they retail for about 2,500. I picked up this lens really cheap and this is honestly one of my go-to lenses because I can do wide landscapes at 24 millimeters and I can also go into 70 millimeters to get some really crisp portraits with the blurry out of focus background. That's what I love about this lens is the versatility. And this always lives in my camera bag. If I were to choose one lens for the rest of my life, it would be this lens right here. The last but most vital piece of equipment that lives in my camera bag is the camera that I shoot photo and video on. I'm recording this video on the camera itself. So I'm gonna switch cameras real quick so I can show you what I shoot on. I'm gonna switch cameras in three, two, all right guys, so I switched to my phone to record this. So this is the camera that I shoot all of my content on. This is the Canon 6D Mark II. I upgraded to this camera on a steal, thanks to one of my old friends back in the Bay Area. This camera has taken a beating. It's seen everything. It's seen snow, it's seen hot weather, it's seen water. This thing has fallen in the water when I was shooting a long exposure one time. The lens I have on it is also another one of my go-to portrait lenses. This is a Sigma 50 millimeter 1.4. And this is by far the sharpest lens I have ever, ever shot on. This is sharper than Canon's L series. It's sharper than most Leica lenses that I've used. And this is Sigma's art line. And this is honestly like, when I, when I bought this lens, it surprised me. I took a few test photos on it and I honestly just, I had to have it. So I impulsively bought this lens, but I do not regret it at all. It has produced some of the best quality photos I think I've ever taken. I'm gonna throw some of those up on the screen right now as well. You can really tell the detail from this lens is very sharp, very clear. There's very little to no chromatic aberration and it produces an all around very crisp, pleasing to the eye image, especially with its swirly out of focus elements in the background. This is the best portrait lens I feel that if anyone's getting into photography and even the pros still swear by this lens. I swear by it and this is going to be my go-to portrait lens until I die. I'm not even kidding. This lens is worth it. This honestly is the best setup in my opinion if you want to do photos, especially for portraits. This produces an excellent image and this is why I keep this on me at all times. All right, now that I've showed you the camera that I shoot all of my content on, I'm gonna continue going through the bag and show some other small stuff before I end this video. I keep extra camera batteries for my 60 Mark II in my camera bag. This camera, especially when shooting video, runs through batteries like there's no tomorrow. That's the only downside about this camera is that the battery life honestly could be a little bit better. In this side flap up here are where I keep my SD cards and my USB drive. So I have about maybe eight different SD cards. I keep them in this small little pocket right here. All right, and last but not least is what I consider to be the heartbeat of my camera bag and probably the heartbeat of my career is this. This is my media pouch. This is a five terabyte My Passport for Max. And this keeps all of my content, all my videos, all my photos, all of my products, all of everything that I ever created, especially in the past two years is on this hard drive. I also have a backup of it at my actual house. If you're getting into photography, I really highly recommend you get a hard drive because I was noticing I'd import all of my photos onto my laptop and then my laptop would start to run out of space, especially when I start shooting a lot more. So I'd have this laptop full of space and I wouldn't have any wiggle room at all, especially when I'd work with video, my laptop would be on the verge of crashing. So. I was advised to get an actual passport and upload all my photos to this, all of my videos to this. So everything is organized in this thin little passport drive. Without this, my photography career would come to a halt. All right, guys, that's all that's in my camera bag. That's everything that I need to create an awesome piece of content, whether that's a video or a photo or a project for a client. I pack really, really light. I don't keep too much stuff on me when I'm out shooting. I like to have everything very accessible, easy to access and ready to go whenever I need it. And that's it. So please hit the subscribe button below, hit the bell so that you'll be notified every time I post a new video. Like I said, I'll have a lot more videos out soon. I look forward to it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.